So yeah, that's a very good question. Um, before I talk about how insulin resistance is uh, affected by exercise or treated by exercise, I wanted to just explain to the viewers what insulin resistance actually is. Now, insulin is a very important signaling hormone released by the pancreas, uh, and essentially once we've eaten a meal, so for example, when, I, when we have our breakfast or we have our lunch, then we have lots of blood glucose circulating around within our blood vessels. Now, if that blood glucose was to remain in our blood vessels, it would start to cause damage to, to the blood vessels, and that can then lead on to, uh, eventually over a period of time, heart disease. Now, what insulin does is, once we've eaten a meal, the pancreas releases insulin, uh, the hormone, and that then promotes the glucose to be taken out of the blood vessels and be taken up by other cells, such as fat cells, uh, the cells of the muscle, uh, and also the liver as well. So that glucose is then taken away from the blood and it's transported uh, in, those, in those tissues. That prevents any damage from occurring uh, in, in, inside the blood vessel. Now what happens with insulin resistance is that for some reason, the when the insulin is released, the body no longer responds to that insulin signal. It becomes resistant to that insulin, and that enables glucose to stay in the blood vessels to potentially cause damage. Now, in that situation, what happens is the pancreas releases more insulin, and we call this hyperinsulinemia, and this is when you've got elevated levels of insulin, uh, and that helps to control the blood glucose down to a certain amount, but what will happen is over time, the hyperinsulinemia insulinemia will not be able to get rid of that blood glucose so then you have you know true insulin resistance and blood glucose levels will remain high so you know if you have a fasting blood test uh, done with your, with your doctors then it, the reading for the glucose will come very high because it's not being uptaken into uh, the liver the fat uh, and, and the muscle cells so this is then uh, a situation that can lead you on to diabetes so uh, approximately 90% uh, of uh, uh, type 2 diabetes Diabetics will have, uh, you know, insulin. It basically, type two diabetics is type two diabetes is the most common form of diabetes. Ninety percent of individuals will have it, and they're likely to have had insulin resistance beforehand. So the two conditions are very much related. So in terms of what exercise does, exercise is very important in improving the sensitivity to insulin. So if you have better sensitivity to insulin, it means that the insulin can, can actually do its job and get the glucose out of the blood, blood vessels uh, and into the tissues where it's going to be stored. So studies have actually shown that if you do uh, aerobic and resistance exercise, then you can actually uh, get much better control of your blood glucose so you get better sensitivity to insulin uh, you also get an increase in your muscle fiber size as well so when we do resistance training our muscles grow and as our muscles grow it means that we've got more cells to uptake the glucose that's circulating in the blood after a meal so resistance training will help to increase muscle mass which will have a positive effect on uh, on getting the glucose out of the the tissue uh, out of the bloodstreams uh, and the other uh, important uh, uh, measure that we can use is something called glycated hemoglobin so this is the HbA1c blood test that you can have uh, at your doctors and this shows your blood glucose control over two to three months so it shows how insulin is working in in the the body in terms of getting the glucose stored into the tissues over a period of two to three months and exercise has been shown to improve uh, HbA1c levels and that is because of the better glucose control. Now it's also important to mention that insulin resistance occurs due to a cluster of other risk factors such as hypercholesterol, so hypercholesterolemia which is basically high cholesterol, uh, hypertension, uh, and also being overweight and obese and especially if that weight you're carrying is around your abdomen so the central part of your body now these cluster of risk factors are known as metabolic syndrome and together they increase the likelihood of, ha of having insulin resistance which then progresses to type 2 diabetes now exercise is brilliant because it actually helps to help you helps you to lose weight but particularly the fat around the central part of your body so uh, the fat around your 
your organs is very damaging and exercise helps to reduce that. Uh, also long-term exercise can reduce cholesterol levels uh, which is then beneficial for uh, 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 reducing the impact of insulin resistance and it can control blood pressure as well. So when we think about the effects of exercise they can be direct so they can directly affect insulin signaling and help to get the glucose out of the blood stored into the tissues but they can also indirectly affect um, uh, insulin resistance by working on some of the most common risk factors uh, that might be related to insulin resistance.